Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I wanna do sort of an update video on using key switches and articulations in Logic Pro 11. Now, if you're looking for a video on using key switches and articulations for like orchestral sounds and brass and horn sounds, I did do a video on that about four years ago, but this video uh, will sort of explain some of that same content. And I'm gonna take a less of like a, a scoring approach and more of like a, a rock and roll approach here using the gin bass instrument from Submission Audio. Although any instrument that has key switches in it, you can create your own custom uh, articulation set for uh, that instrument um, so that you can get the most out of that instrument. And that's what key switches are really great for, articulation sets are really great for, is they allow you to program in different playing styles within a single MIDI region without having to separate you know, each playing style down to a different track. For example, with gin bass, um, this is a picked like hard rock metal uh, bass instrument. But often when I program in bass parts, I find that there are certain notes that I play on my guitar, like mutes, palm mutes, slides, hammer-ons, pull-offs, that you can't really easily replicate with most bass instruments. And that's what these key switches do. They, they add like maybe 10%, 15% more uh, realism to the instrument and make it sound more like a real player and less like a MIDI player. Before we dive into the tutorial, I wanna take a moment to introduce you to our sponsor, Boombox. If you're a musician, producer, or audio engineer, this platform is a game changer. Boombox combines everything you need, file storage, collaboration tools, and networking into one seamless experience. Imagine having a secure space for all of your audio files from individual tracks to complete DAW sessions. With Boombox, you can not only store your work, but also invite collaborators to join your projects. Plus, you can set up personalized inboxes for clients to easily upload their files. But that's not all. Boombox lets you connect with other creatives by creating a unique artist profile. Boombox has also jumped into the world of AI with Boombot AI, your personal assistant producer that can assist you in writing lyrics, generating MIDI musical ideas, splitting stems, and more. If you want to check out Boombox for yourself, head over to boombox.io today and sign up to get four gigabytes of free storage. So before we get into using gin bass and creating an articulation set, let me just give you an overview of articulations. So if I were to create a new software instrument here, let's say I wanted to create a new bass instrument and I wanted to use a stock Logic instrument, like one of the studio bass instruments that's new to uh, Logic 11. If you choose an instrument that uses studio bass or studio horns or studio uh, strings, when you open up that MIDI region, you're going to see an articulation menu here in the piano roll that you wouldn't otherwise see. Basically what this does is it allows you to change up the articulation of each note in your MIDI sequence. So right now it's just standard playing style. And what I could do is I could I can select certain notes that I want to have a different articulation, like maybe some of these notes, I want these to be muted notes. I can select those notes, go over to the articulation menu here, and I can change the articulation. So it's going to change the playing style on those notes. So now those uh, green notes are all mutes rather than just a standard uh, pluck of the string. Now you're probably wondering why are the colors of the notes changing as I change the articulation on each note? And that's because I've selected the articulation set note color option. So you just go up to view, set note color. By default, it's probably set to velocity, but you can set this to by articulation. So this makes it a lot easier to see which notes are different uh, articulations. Okay, now you can do this in any of the studio bass instruments. 
studio horns or studio strings. What these do when you load those up is if you go up to the, the track inspector here, you'll see it loads up a custom articulation set. And you'll see Logic has these built in for studio bass, studio horns, and studio strings. You don't even really have to select them anymore. I believe anytime you select one of those instruments or a preset from the library, it's going to automatically load up that articulation set for you. But you can also just turn it off by saying none. But how do you approach this with third-party instruments like gin bass. Um, well, what you have to do is you have to create your own custom articulation set. The good news is if you create the articulation set once, you'll never have to create it again. Um, so let's give our uh, musical example here a quick listen and hear what it sounds like uh, as is. Yeah, so this bass line is suffering from basically the same problem that most MIDI bass lines, uh, bass guitar lines, uh, suffer from is every single note sounds exactly the same in terms of its playing style. We want the playing style of the bass to match the guitar part as much as possible here. Um, so what I'm going to do is on the uh, bass track here. Again, open up the track inspector, go here where it says articulation set, and by default, it's gonna say none, and you're gonna select new. And this is gonna allow you to create your own custom articulation set. I'm gonna go ahead and open up gin bass because I need to see what those articulations actually are. And the way you can see those, at least in gin bass, is you click right here and it shows those articulations. Most instruments that have articulation sets will show them uh, right in the main uh, interface or there'll be some sort of panel you can go to uh, to change up those key switches. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the articulations tab and you're gonna create an articulation for each articulation that that instrument has. So this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I'm just gonna add nine of these. It's also important to note that at least for this instrument, the default articulation uh, is pick. This is a picked bass instrument. There are no finger style key switches for this particular instrument. What's gonna be a little weird is that Logic will automatically make your top uh, articulation, articulation ID one, it's gonna make that one the default setting. So you can do this whichever way you want. You can, you know, we could start at C negative two and work our way uh, up to G sharp negative two, or we could do them in order just like it, it has it here. Uh, it's really up to you. You can put them in any order you like. For the name, you're just gonna type in the name of each articulation. So harmonic mute, and then we have dead note or dead mute slide up fast, slide up slow, slide down fast, slide down slow, pull off, hammer on, and then the starting articulation pick. Now you don't have to do anything for channel. You want this to go to all channels in most cases. You can put like a musical symbol on it if you want. I believe this will uh, make this show up in the score editor if you actually use the score editor in Logic. Um, I'm gonna go to output now. And this is where you're going to choose what type of articulation each one of these is and what the selector is for it, the note is. So I'm just going to set the type on all of these to note on because these are all note on functions. And I'm almost wondering if pull off is a note off function. I'm going to keep it note on for now, but we can uh, test that out later. And then the selector is going to be the key switch note that triggers each articulation. And you'll notice that all of these are like in the negatives. These are not playable notes. These are just notes that are going to trigger a particular articulation to play. So harmonic mute is going to be G sharp negative two. Then we have uh, G negative two, F sharp negative two, F negative two, E negative two, D sharp negative two, D negative two, C sharp negative two, and then finally C negative two for pick. Okay, so once you've finished uh, building your articulation set, you can actually just save this here. So I'll click Save As, and I'll call this Gin Bass. There we go. I can close out the key switch info, and let's listen to our bass on its own. Let me just mute everything else. Now, remember what I said 
the default articulation is going to be the one that's at the top of the list. So that's what's happened here. If you don't want that to happen, just list the default articulation you want at the top of the list. But I'm just going to hit Command A to select all of these notes and choose Pick, and that'll bring us back to the default articulation. So a lot of these notes, like here, 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 and here, these are all notes that on the guitar, in the guitar riff, I'm palm muting. I'm muting that note. So what I may want to do is mute those notes. So you get more of like a little staccato uh, sound on those. This one has two different types of mute, dead mute and harmonic mute. I'm going to go ahead and use the harmonic mute for this. And it, if you're working with guitar, it does help to kind of bring up the guitar part and the bass part together. So So we got one here, one here, one here, and one there to make all of these harmonic mutes. Ah, so you hear right here in the guitar, it goes boom, boom, da, da, da. it's like a slide. So we're going to put a slide up on this note. So good articulation. Let's try slide up fast. Let's see what that sounds like. That's cool. Um, let's try slide up slow. Let's just get that soloed. Slide up fast. I think slide up fast is just fine. Okay, so I'm going to do the rest of this section off screen and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got the rest of this section uh, figured out for the articulations. Everything that's dark orange is a muted note and everything that's a, a yellow is a slide. Some bad editing. Yeah, so maybe some pops and clicks on the guitars. I'll have to go back and fix that later. But yeah, everything's um, been set, you know, to the proper articulation. There are a few other ones, though, in here in this main riff, where in the guitar I'm doing, like, a, a hammer-on and pull-off. Basically, when you, if you're not a guitar player, you can pluck a note with your, with your pick and then use another finger to hammer on another note without actually picking. And I'm pretty sure all of these are hammer-ons and pull-offs. Yeah, these da-da-da-da. It's just I'm picking once and playing two different notes. So the way you would do this is the first note is going to be a pull-off, and then the next one's going to be a hammer-on. Let's see what that sounds like just with the... The bass in. Especially the hammer on is probably more important than the pull off here because the, um, the, the hammer on is going to uh, make the note sound like it doesn't have a, a pick to it. So I'm going to go through and just do all these here, here. These are all going to be pull offs. These are all going to be hammer ons. And then I'll just do the same thing throughout this uh, whole uh, section here off screen. Okay, so as I was working through this, I started realizing these C sharps that I had originally as pull-offs actually sound better just as regular picks. And then I'm making the, uh, the next note a hammer on. So I'm using pick and hammer on. So that, that kind of reduces the workload here. I don't need to change two notes. I just need to change... All of these little D's there, there, 
Let's change all of those to hammer-ons. I think this is a hammer-on as well. Okay, so this takes us to the pre-chorus. And here there are some slides and, uh, you know, pull-offs and mutes as well. So let's give this a listen. So the guitar is going na 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 It's like a slide up from F to G here. Whereas with the stock, you know, pick articulation, it's just picking that note. So let's add like a slide, a slide up right here. Let's try out the slide up fast articulation instead. And there's another one over here. And sometimes you just have to kind of experiment with the articulations and just, you know, go with what sounds best. Yeah, let's go ahead and bring in the guitar again. So these are all mutes. Let's add a harmonic mute to those. Yeah, this is also a slide. This is going to be a hammer on. These are all muted notes. I think this is a um, actually a hammer on. Okay, so let's uh, bring back in the other guitar and the drums, and let's see what all this sounds like with those articulations uh, in there. Again, you know, for bass, it may not be like a super noticeable effect, but it is an effect that will, you know, increase the realism in uh, your MIDI uh, instruments. So it's wor definitely worth doing. I know it's very time consuming with these articulation sets here right in the menu. You know, it's it's pretty much easier than it's ever been uh, been before. And with the ability to, you know, set your note color by articulation, that's a huge help as well. So let's give this whole section uh, a listen, these three sections. And again, we've got more mutes and slides and other things in this next section, but I think you get the gist of it. That is how you can use uh, articulations and key switches in Logic Pro and how to create your own custom articulation sets for use with third-party instruments. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.